Mole bridge conversions, these particular mole bridge conversions are between grams to atoms, grams to moles, moles to grams, atoms to moles, or moles to atoms. Truth is, there's just one concept that you need, and that's the concept of conversions. First, always write down what you know on the far left hand side and what you'd like to know on the far right hand side. So right now with this, what we know, we know that we have 100 grams of silver. So write that down on the far left hand side. What we'd like to know is how many atoms of silver we've got. Now right there with my grading, you've got three points. Next, we need to set up conversions so we get um, our grams to cancel out. Grams over grams of silver is one. So that's the way they cancel out. Now we can move from grams to moles, hence the mole bridge. Now with few exceptions, write the quantity of one next to mole in each conversion. Now the molar mass is the mass for every one mole or mass per mole. We look at the periodic table to discover the molar mass of, of silver. If grams or mass is mentioned, then you must consult the periodic table. See the atomic mass or weight. This is the molar mass or mass per mole for that particular element. We look up silver, we have 107.8682 grams of silver for every one mole. Now if it were a compound, we'd have to add up all the component parts. Now since we have grams over grams, those cancel. Now over here, we already pointed out, we want atoms of silver, not moles of silver. So we want moles of silver to go away and leave us with atoms of silver. Now again, with few exceptions, write the quantity of one next to mole in each conversion. For every one mole, we have a specific number. Just like for every one dozen, we have a specific number, in which case that's 12. For mole, the number is Avogadro's number, or 602 times 10 to the 23rd power. You'll see that moles cancels, and we're going to be left with atoms of silver. Perfect. So we go ahead, take the product of the numerator, divided by the product of the denominator. 100 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives us 6.02 times 10 to the 25th, divided by, the product here is 1 times 107.8682 times 1, still 107.8682, so 6.02 times 10 to the 25th divided by 107.8682. Now for significant digits, we look to our beginning number, the actual values. You see 100. 100 without a decimal on the end only has one significant digit. Our answer should do likewise. When we solve it in a calculator, we get 5.58 times 10 to the 23rd. Problem is, that has three significant digits. So we go ahead, we round, the round to even rule with fives, forces the five up to a six, giving us six times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. Next, we want moles of silver, and we're told we have the same number, 100 grams of silver. Remember, far left, what we know, far right, what we'd like to know. So we go ahead, we want grams to cancel. We can move from grams to moles using the molar mass. Look at the periodic table. For every one mole, you have 107.8682 grams. Now you'll notice grams of silver cancel, we're left with moles, which means we don't need to use this last stem. This was provided just as extras again one significant digit, we do our math, we get 0.9 moles per gram. Next, we'd like to know grams of cesium. We have 1.75 moles of cesium. So we write that down. 
1.75 moles of cesium. We want to know grams of cesium. We set it up so moles cancels. We can go from moles to grams using the molar mass. Again, with few exceptions, we put a 1 next to moles. And that way we can just look at the periodic table and find how many grams of cesium are required. Looking at the reference that I found, 132.91 grams of cesium for every one mole of cesium. Again, since moles of cesium cancel and we're left with grams, we don't need this last section. So we go ahead, we do our math, we assume three significant digits at the end. two hundred thirty two grams of cesium.